Trees absorb carbon. Understanding how much carbon they absorb now and in the future is critical to understanding climate change and its impacts. The tricky thing is this. As our climate warms, the phenological cycles of plants are being affected. This means the period in which trees are active is changing. And only when they're active do they absorb carbon. So you think that as our, our climate warms and we have longer springs and summer seasons in temperate regions, those trees will be active for longer and they will therefore absorb more carbon from the atmosphere, which will be a silver lining in the fight to reduce emissions, right? Well, not necessarily so. Leaf senescence is the process whereby deciduous trees, they shut down and lose their leaves in the autumn. We wanted to know, is this likely to happen earlier or later as the climate warms? By how much and why? We use over 434,000 autumn leaf senescence observations from between 1948 to 2015 as the foundation for our research. These allowed us to study six deciduous tree species at 3,800 sites across Central Europe. We compared the effect of several factors on senescent states during this period, including spring leave-out, CO2 concentrations, temperature and precipitation. We also ran a set of controlled experiments in the lab designed to corroborate those observations. To do that, we modified and looked at the effect of daylight, temperature and CO2 fertilization on plant productivity and the knock-on effect these had on leaf senescence. Previous research suggests that the senescence will happen around 7 to 19 days later than at present by the end of the 21st century. In theory, that could lead forests to absorb more carbon per year. Our new model actually suggests the opposite. We found that leaf senescence will likely advance by around three to six days over the rest of this century. Across all the species we studied, years with greater photosynthesis in spring and summer were associated with early autumn senescence, a finding supported by our lab experiments. It seems, in fact, plants may reach their limit. Similar to when we have a good meal, it doesn't matter how much food is in front of you. There will always be a limit to how much you can eat. So essentially, if a tree experiences more photosynthesis in spring and summer, it then takes less cumulative autumn chilling for the plant to react and shed its leaves. We believe the most likely explanation for this is given by the single imitation hypothesis predicting that carbon uptake during the growing season imposes strong constraints on the length of the productive season. Basically, carbohydrate reserves may reach the limit early in the season if spring and summer photosynthetic rates are elevated. This means that plant productivity and therefore carbon uptake will not likely increase as much as predicted by previous models. So overall, the amount of carbon absorbed by forest ecosystems will be lower than expected in the past this is especially true as other recent research from our lab indicates that spring leave-out is also not expected to advance as much as previously predicted. This understanding is important advancement. If people are to succeed in the fight against climate change, a thorough understanding of tree productivity and ecosystem functioning as a whole is critical. From here, scientists can begin to form more accurate vegetation models to predict productivity, carbon uptake and therefore the ability of nature-based solutions to help slow climate change.